Welcome, folks, to this week's edition. What are we? October 31st, yes. Halloween. Oh. Halloween uh, episode of Latino Talk TV, <laughs> our latest show. We want to thank everybody for, for tuning in today. I tell you, this has been a long, this show has been a long time coming. We have been searching for months and months and months wow. to, to get a Trump supporter that could speak intelligently here without. <laughs> Go into name calling, right? And you know, and 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 like my wife just said, this lady, Miss Vicky Cruz, has a set of big ones. <laughs> <laughs> she she said that she could talk, and and you've been speaking to her. Oh, let me. I'm sorry. Let me introduce my co-host, uh, Elaine Gracia, and this is our guest today, Miss Vicky Cruz. We're going to be talking to her in just a minute, but. Uh, uh, you know, like I was saying, we've been looking for, for months to get someone up here that could talk intelligently about why they support Donald Trump yes. and why they think that person would be good for the Latino community. We did a lot of vetting with her. Yes. And, and you know what? I don't know how many men just wouldn't do it. They talk real, they're real tough on Facebook and, you know, they answer anything you say, but you got to try to put them in front of a camera. Man, they're a bunch of sissies. <laughs> Oh, my goodness, man. <laughs> well, to begin with, you know what happens is that women do have two big ones. It's two lobes of brain, right? Brain, left brain. They got, yeah, I guess. So they makes got, us yeah. special. <laughs> I, tell you, I tell you, it's great. But, uh, you know, I um, tell you, it's been a, it's been a, heck, of a heck of a week and a, a weekend. Mm -hmm. Boy, I tell you, they put is that it? October surprise on Hillary Clinton. Has yes, tightened this race did. up more than what they thought. They did. I tell you, it's a, uh, oh, man, it, it's a. Uh, you got a lot of backtracking, a lot of explaining to do, but I tell you, and, and you know, the only thing, a lot of people already voted. <laughs> I mean, I, I voted, not that I would change my vote, but. Right. Uh, uh, but I, I think mean, that's what's going to happen. I mean, I, if it, I don't think it necessarily tightened the race. I think people, I think some people, there was just so few people that were undecided by this mm -hmm. point. Um, and, and, I, and I can say my daughter was one of them, and she saw that come out, and now she was like, well, I may be voting for Trump now because I don't know about these emails. So um, I, there may, I think she represents, yeah. you know, some people that have that concern about the emails and what's in them. But um, I, what do you think? What do you think's in them? You know what? It, it, it comes, for me, it comes down to, it comes down to the person's, I guess what really the person's character, um, um, and what I like and what I dislike about Hillary Clinton is that she's a politician. Oh yeah. And the reason I say I like and dislike is that she's going to be she is going to be susceptible to because she wants to get reelected. So she's going to do try to do the things to get reelected. Sure. Donald. Donald's a loose cannon, baby. He don't care. He doesn't. You know, I, I'm starting to believe that he never really wanted to be president. He just wanted I said to say that. the things that he wanted to say just, I said to, that. just to shock people. And people just gravitated toward it and, and rode with it. Well, I don't think he realized how much it was going to hurt his brand, though. It there's, yeah. there's, it's definitely has reduced the amount of people that stay at the hotels. They've actually have had to reduce prices. Oh, no. Like, they really <laughs> did reduce prices. They had, like, a sale on the yeah. Trump hotels. And they opened up several hotels and they didn't even put the Trump name on it. The Trump name has been damaged through all this. So if he was thinking this was going to be a free ride of advertising, I think that's it's been a really hard road for him. I think it shocked him. him. Yeah. You know, because I, I don't really think he wants to win. I think he just wants to say whatever Well, no, that's not true. If you, go back to, if you go back to his biographies, uh, he is a man that must win. And even when he mm -hmm. lost, he found a way to spin it that he won. Yeah. Did you see that, like in the yeah. Atlantic City, Taj, you know, the, the whole Taj Mahal debacle? I mean, he spent billions, mm -hmm. lost lost a lot of money for his contractors, for the city, for, he didn't lose. Yeah. Everybody else lost. Yeah. He didn't lose. He does, he's not a man to lose. So I don't think he came into this race to lose, but I don't think he thought he would lose. I don't, I don't think he thought he'd be, still be here. Or losing all that money. <laughs> in November. No, I think he thought he would. I think he, really? I think his I, ego. I don't know about that. Yeah, I think his ego would have thought the biggest, the biggest contest to ever win would be the president of the United States. Well, that's true, but I tell you, man, I, I, I don't think I don't think the man can pass the civics test. Oh no, 
I don't think he can pass civics. I don't think he no. can tell you how a law becomes a, uh, how a bill becomes a law. No, he, I don't think he understands. I don't think he can tell you how a, a, a constitutional amendment becomes an amendment. I don't think he knows that he can't just put Supreme Justices on the court and it's the done deal. I, I don't think he knows. Yeah, I think you're right. He thinks he's going to govern this, the United States it like just he would have business. Whoever in jail he wants to put in jail. <laughs> I mean, how does that work like that? Hey, but wouldn't you, though? Okay, if I was president. <laughs> well, dictator. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make me president. The banana republic. Well, I there's love some, that. There's some people I'd put in jail like that. <laughs> oh, no, I'm I just tell kidding. You. I I'm tell kidding. you, but it, I tell you, it's been a, a, it was a, a great weekend, huh? We had some, a little warm. A lot to do. Yeah. Yeah, there yeah. was a lot of fundraisers out for the candidates. Um, there was a lot, there was a lot going on. What did you do? Oh man, I was at, I was at TBH the whole weekend. You know, we, we it was our first weekend since we had the the, the murals done, so we yes. still have people coming over to see the murals. And if you haven't seen the murals from the Houston Urban Experience folks, you got to come by and see the murals at TBH. They were they were amazing. It was approximately one, two, three, four, and one panel the 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 width of the building, the whole width of the building in the back. It's like an eagle. Aztec Eagle Transformer is what yeah. they, the way they describe it. <laughs> um, That's we awesome. had we had one of the one on the front of the building was called uh, uh, the the artist told me it was a narwala is what they called it, and that's what that is. Well, that was the Aztec. It was an Aztec, uh, a mythical character that was a shapeshifter. That see he would become it was a man or woman, but he would become whatever he needed to be, at right, time or something like that. I said, well, sh shoot, we got those today. We call them politicians. <laughs> 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 but, I know that's that that's that um, that's that symbol that all these ancient alien yeah something like that yeah exactly go after yeah exactly so but it's, it's pretty cool though I mean the, it, it the art is beautiful oh the heart yeah the art the heart, is yeah. beautiful heart of nature thing with that one so yeah. how did the mock election go actually you know what Richard uh, uh, Farias was tabulating that up he took that with him Saturday Good. so he's gonna use tabulating it up and he's supposed to let let us know today so I haven't talked to him today yet so. We'll see how that went, but uh, uh, had, a, had a fairly good turnout. People came in. We also showed the Willie Velasquez story. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, I, I, I have heard the name many, many times, but I had no idea Willie Velasquez, how, how much we owe that man. You know, he died very young. He, he was the, he was the uh, founder of the uh, Southwest, Voter, uh, uh, Southwest Voter Project. Mm -hmm. And he died very young at 44 years old uh, in 1988. So, I and mean, we owe so much to that man because this man just went from grassroots and and just took it upon himself to 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 be the driving force and get Latinos registered to vote in this country. And we owe a lot to that man. I tell you, it was an, it was a, a powerful powerful documentary. And uh, we're going to try to we're going to try to show it again at, at TBH uh, just for people to come by and see. Hopefully, within the next uh, for the election, that'd people be great. See because it, he he was he was a fantastic man. I tell you, I had no idea he did what he did. But uh, great, look him up. Google Willie, Willie Velasquez. He, he's he is, uh, you know, he was just such a such a great person, and and uh, so, we owe so much to him. Like I said, they, we we stand on the shoulders of those that come before us, and Willie Velasquez certainly is one of them. But you know, I think uh, uh, we have a special treat. Why don't you tell us what you did last week, Elaine? We what did you do? <laughs> well, I did a lot of things. Uh, so w which one do you want to hear about? I'm talking about I'm talking about the video you filmed. Well, okay, so the on the very first day of uh, voting, uh, we went out and we wanted to just interview people that had just voted. It, we thought it was important to see why people were willing to come out on the very first day. Yeah. And we went to Ripley House and uh, we started uh, just interviewing people and um, there was a lot of passion. Oh, we yeah, we got imagine. to, uh, we interviewed a gentleman who had who had voted for the very first time. He was young. He was 23. Uh, we interviewed a man that was 71 and had only voted twice in his life, and this was going to be one of them. Wow. Um, and, and we found, we actually found a Trump supporter that I'm actually very proud of. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. She, um, she actually does a lot of really good work in the East End. Now we're talking uh, about Miss Vicky. We here? are talking about Miss Vicky Cruz. This is Vicky Cruz. Yes. And she's our guest, and she's going to be on the video, right? She is in the video. So why don't we, why don't we see the video, and then we'll come and get some background on Vicky. Let's let's see what she looks like on the video, huh? Okay, she's very passionate. Great. So are we ready to roll, Enrique? Give it. It's got about three minutes long, folks. Stand by. <laughs> Bueno, 
Bueno, uh, yo les voy a dar a, a toda mi gente, por favor, que es un derecho el venir a votar y les recomiendo que vengan a votar para poder ser más, uh, tener un país con más facilidades. People need to vote because it's their right to vote. They need to build bridges, not walls. They need to respect each other's culture. They need to respect each other as human beings. Um, I am totally against what Hillary is doing. I don't trust Hillary, so you can get that on there. I don't, there's just something in my spirit that I just don't have a good sense with this woman. So, Hillary. Well, the candidate of the Democrats. And why? Because, well, for the experience. She has a lot of experience and has been for many years in this en estos negocios y por eso voté por esta persona. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. Excuse me, sit down, you weren't called. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Go ahead. No, you don't. You haven't been called. Go back to Univision. Most of the people here that they're trying to send back is their homeland. They were here before we came. And we were brought here, kidnapped, brought here. But they were already here, so why you gonna build a wall for them? Build bridges. Show love, show concern, show respect. That's what you need to do. And we put you in office, now only millionaires can run. When I was coming up, it was for the people. Now it's for anybody that got a doubt. So it shouldn't be that way. And that's what I think about America is looking at it and saying that he's targeting our, our our race he's not that is not the case at all what trump is trying to do is actually sit here and weed out the immigrants not just from mexico whether they're from any other country and i believe that um, we need to really consider these things because of the fact that we're taking on more expenses that we need to in our country here outside of just you know our own personal taxes you know um I know that, secondly, I don't want Obamacare. I am one person here along many others who don't have insurance. You know, I've worked all my life. I've worked really, really hard. I've been insured all my life. And this is the first time ever that I can't be insured. You know, I'm a middle class um, American, and um, that's, what, that's another reason here. Well, so I want to thank you for actually coming out and saying everything that you did. Appreciate it. Absolutely. And then also, no abortion. Sit down, please. You weren't called. Go. Yes, go ahead. I, uh, that's Jorge Ramos <laughs> of Jim, Univision. Yes. He's being escorted out of the room. It's not about you. It's not about Get out of my country. Get out of my country. Believe that? Oh, that was a Trump staffer. Yeah, oh, he's God. no longer oh, on the campaign gosh. anymore. By the way, was, that particular person. That that wasn't the. Uh, that was uh, his original campaign manager. Oh my gosh. Oh, and he's an American-born citizen. Well, he's not American-born citizen. He is a naturalized citizen. Jorge Ramos is a naturalized citizen. Absolutely, this is yeah. his country. Yeah. But I think that's what you know, kind of th sparked. That's, that's the point I've been trying to make. A racist never asks you if you're a citizen or not. No. He just sees your skin and hates you and yeah. reacts from that hate. Yeah. That's what people don't realize. I agree. I've, 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 I've come up against racism a couple of times. You know, at a, at a and I'll tell you what, right outside of, uh, uh, I've told this story before, right, right outside of uh, Garner State Park. Big redneck guy sitting in there telling all the Mexicans to get out of the water because they're greasing up the water. And he's talking to a bunch of kids. This is a grown man talking to a bunch of kids. And this guy was huge. He was about six, eight. You know? and, and I think that's what that's what a lot of people forget is um, why this topic is so sensitive, mm -hmm. you know, because the brown skin has been put through things that white skin has not. And I can say, even though I, I am Hispanic, I am a seventh generation Texan on my dad's side, third generation Mexican on my mom's side. And uh, because my skin is light, I, I can actually utilize that white privilege, and I have. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, but I see my husband struggle, yeah. you know, with an accent and, and brown skin. 
and my sister's. Your husband's a very smart man. Yeah, extremely smart. Extremely intelligent, and the, and the son of a gun has a black belt, which I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so next time, next time we go out, we go out to have a drink. I'm gonna be right there, and I'm gonna be a little more belligerent. <laughs> I know, I know he'll be backing me up, Oscar Garcia. He's I'm a great very individual. proud of him. I'm so proud of him. He was at, he was ranked in the state actually for Taekwondo. Yeah. Wow. Yes, That's I have, I have videos. Great, great, I and he's, uh, <laughs> he's graduating pretty soon from the NHPL leadership. Yes, That's he's state. in the Leadership Institute. They Very serve proud uh, of him. Uh, teach and serve leadership and, mm -hmm. and give back to the community and really proud of He always uh, said, if you can't beat him, join him. He's, he, he, <laughs> he has to spend time with me, he says, if this is the only way he's going to do it. <laughs> he's a great man. He's a great guy. Yeah, well, you know, let, let's let's talk to Vicky. You know, let, I know she's in the hot seat. Vicky, first of all, we appreciate you being here. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And from what I'm hearing, you're you're an old, uh, long time East Ender, right? Yes, born you know, and raised. Let, let born us, and give, raised. Give us some background about yourself. Well, I um, attended Milby High School. Um, I'm a graduate there from 1991. Um, graduated and um, I actually attended H.P. Carter my last year because I was. Um, uh, soon to be a high school dropout. Um, I too was also raised with the understanding that Hispanics just did not go to school. We didn't, you know, you don't, um, I was under the, the pretense that, you know, it was only the Caucasians um, that would actually get educated and, um, and um, actually even thought even go to heaven. I'm thinking, oh God. But um, it, it was just, it was just, you know, those, the way things were and, and what we were taught, but so I, ra I, I was born and raised there and um, graduated and um, eventually became a Navy wife. And, um, and during that time, um, I moved away. And when I moved away, things became a lot more clear and standards began to change for me. And um, I came back to Houston at which time I joined the US military. And um, I went back to school, pursued my bachelor's degree as a single mom, and I went back again for a master's in counseling. Wow. Yes, and then um, I eventually, you know, I'm now a certified coach. Yeah, you said you're a certified life coach. Mm -hmm. E EV life coaching is that the name yes. you're going? Well, that's great. That's great. I think I think the most impressive thing, uh, because you know I'm always about the community, is what she's done in the East End for the homeless is pretty remarkable. Uh, being able to find people that are homeless and find them a place to stay, get them some food, and she connects them. Uh, so, and I think that's really needed. You know, when when the downtown Houston started sending all of their homeless to the East End, mm. you know, it started to become uh, an issue, and and there were people that could address it, and she did. So, I congratulate you on that, and and commend you for that. You, but you know, and 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 Vicky, you from what I understand, you've just you just started a, a, a just got your 501c3? Yes, I, I did um, just about a, a week ago, a okay. nonprofit for Mission One International. And what that vision is to help the shelters here in the community, give them the resources. Because 13 years ago, 14 years ago, I spent a lot of time in the community assessing people, sharing hope, um, listening to them, mm -hmm. listening to their story, going to the same bridge after the same bridge day after day or whatever time I would have. Um, to get out there and to build these relationships, to build these bridges. And, um, and what I found is I was placing the people off the streets that there wasn't enough resources out there. And um, so what eventually happened was I said, you know what, we're, I, my calling, what I want to do is help those that serve others, serve those who serve others. And um, so what Mission One does is provides, um, the goal is to provide um, the education for these shelters. Because what I found is that these shelters didn't have the resources they needed. You know, they'd come in and they, these people would just, you know, come back out and hit the drugs again or just whatever, you know, mm -hmm. you know, situation they were in. So they just weren't getting the education. They didn't have, the shelters didn't have the logistics, the marketing. Um, they maybe didn't have um, the proper construction. And so what Mission One um, is there for to try to help them here in the East End and Third Ward get the, um, the resources that they need. Well, you know what, Vicki, it, it really blows me away because usually the Trump supporter we see on the news mm -hmm. has, I don't think knows the meaning of the word compassion. 
and you seem to be full of compassion. Mm -hmm. and, so, and a true Christian because, you know, are, are true to her faith uh, because uh, there's so many people that are on Facebook, let's face it. I mean, they're our friends. I know them. We know them. And they are claiming a conservative uh, value towards politics, but don't have anything to do with faith or a, you know, are, are serving of, of any kind. And, and that's where I, it just absolutely drives me crazy because if you're going to be on a conservative platform, then do something conservative, right. be that person. Uh, otherwise you're just, you know, just a smoke screen to me, but she really, she's the real deal. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so um, Vicky, was that hard for you? Was that hard for you to, to, to back Donald Trump? You know, it, it was, and, and initially, um, it was a hard decision for me because of the fact that, yes, you know, I do see, you know, some of the, um, you know, his approach on certain situations. Um, but I also, when I have to look between the two evils, I'm like, I have to, to stand for a stance. And, you know, I've been Republican almost all my life. I wasn't, you know, raised into a Republican home. Um, but the conservativeness of, of my faith is what draws me into, um, this race. And so I, you know, I'm just, um, yes, I, but how, how do you, you know, and one of the things that, you know, when people have told me, well, you know, I'm, 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 and, and we know people, Elaine, that are, that are basically just standing with, with Donald Trump because of the abortion issue. Yes. But I don't really think he gives a flip about abortion. I, I mean, he, I mean, we, we have him on camera saying that he was pro-choice. And, and now that he's conservative, you know, and now he's saying he's, he's, he's pro-life. Pro right. I mean, right. what do you, do you really, I think he'll say anything to, get, to try to get elected or just, just try to, 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 to just kind of need that, that, that conservative base that he has. You know, he's trying to say the right thing. So I, I, I don't really think the man is, is cares one way or the other, to tell you the truth that's that's pretty much you know i'm i can't judge his feelings in that because we don't know what's going on in his mind only what's coming out of his mouth but i i see everything else that's so immoral about him um you know his just the cruelty of the way he speaks to me alone just you know concerns me but i i can see you know but my mom um struggles with this my daughter struggles with this yeah. um it's, it's, uh, I struggled with it, <laughs> but at one point, just like Vicki, you know, I had to finally, I had to make a decision and, and I, and I chose, um, to stand with the people mm -hmm. and, and, and for different moral reasons. Uh, but I, I feel like you do. I don't, I don't, I don't believe he cares about morality. I don't think he cares really about any of that. Uh, I think it's about winning for him, but you know, it's always what ifs. Yeah, that's true. What's a what that's if? That's true. How, how do you feel about Donald Trump's stance on, do you really think that he's really pro-life? Well, I mean. Um, and, and, and is that a big part of why you're, you're backing it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's one of the, you know, it's, you know, based on my faith and, you know, what's right. I mean, we just you know, it, it shouldn't be, you know, sitting here and taking the baby's lives at a third term pregnancy. It's yeah. just, you can't do that. I mean, you know, six months, seven months, we still have babies that are going through um, gestational periods and surviving after a six month birth. And there's just no way that I think that, um, you know, we should stand for that. And, um, you know, where, what his intentions are, you know, that's, I believe is between him and God. Mm -hmm. um, I do know that many people are looking at the stances between of what he says when Hillary has done just the same. You know, Hillary has stood there and has accepted money. You know, just as much as, you know, Donald may waver on some issues, so has Hillary. Hillary's wavered with me. You know, one minute she's, you know, for the gays and lesbians, and one minute she's not. One minute she's for um, the, the border, one minute she's not, or she's just, you know, the stance that she takes, it's just a wavering. It's just as much wavering as Donald is. Um, you know, and I know that, you know, she's taking money for her foundation, right. for, um, 
from foreign countries, from the same foreign countries that sit here and execute the gay and lesbians, you know, and I think she's just doing the same thing, telling people, you know, what they want to hear, you know, and, um, and her approach is just different. You know, she's going to set board, you know, border securities, just like Bill did when Bill ran his first term. He's <coughs> mm -hmm. his, his thing was he was going to put the wall up just like Donald. You know, he said, hey, I'm going to put a wall up, but nobody really caught that. You know, so um, I just think that because it was Donald's approach of Mr. Trump's approach on how he delivered the message is what's putting that taste in everyone's mouth, the bad taste. And so, I mean, I do see that, you know, there's there's benefits. And um, but, you know, but to your question, you know, yes, I mean, I think that um, I have to vote for what my conservative values are. And that's to save the life of a baby. You know that that really, uh, um, for one, I, I I think you're being sincere, and that's that's uh, that's that's certainly you know a great thing to see when someone uh, is is truly voting their values. But then again, you see people voting their their values, and their values are based on hate. Right. That is what. I think that's that the biggest gets fear. Under my skin. Just as much as um, that particular faction of that of the Trump supporters, I don't even want to call them Republicans because I, I don't know what these people are, but but that percentage of people full of hate is what I find so dangerous in Donald Trump. I find him as uh, someone that incites that type of of anger enough where people are willing to turn their back on what's right and what's wrong. When a man can talk about his sexual um, appetite and how he wants to assault women and everyone's, oh, well, that's okay. Because they're so caught up on the rest of the rhetoric, I find him extremely dangerous. I, I, I think that he, I think he took the textbook from Hitler and, and has incited the hatred. Um, I feel in the long run, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I am a pro-life person myself. <laughs> I'm a Republican not voting for Trump. But, you know, I also, I, one, I don't believe him. I don't believe that he's going to put the Supreme Court justices in there like he said he is, because it's not just up to him. It's up to him nominating and the confirmation. Uh, I think it's, it's the overall package. It's everything that we do. It's not one person that will decide. It will be our Senate that will decide in the end. And if we're not careful about how we take care of this part, we're going to go down a spiral that we will not be able to come out of. And that's my fear with him. You know, as far as the foundations on both sides, Trump's foundation and Hillary's foundation, there's always going to be improprieties in, in foundations like that, at that magnitude. Uh, I think people take liberties more than they should. Uh, with that kind of money coming in to a foundation, there really has to be a lot of check and balances, right? Absolutely. Well, Trump's foundation doesn't have any balance as far as I'm concerned from what I've seen, you know, buying a picture of himself and saying that that's, you know, putting it in one of his hotels is, I don't know about how that goes. <laughs> Hillary, on the other hand, taking money from countries that are, um, um, you know, that we, we consider to be violators of human rights. Mm -hmm. But then she took that money, 90% of the money went back to those third world countries. Right. Um, and, and I, you know, I think too often we're willing to turn our face to uh, what's right and wrong just to get the result that we want. Mm -hmm. And I think that's happening in both parties. And I think it has happened in both parties. Um, but I, but I absolutely am afraid of Donald Trump and what he could do to um, to the United States and to Hispanics and to Muslims. I, I have friends. And actually, I wore this scarf in her honor because she lives in Malaysia. Uh, she came to the United States to visit and brought me this scarf. And she's one of the, <coughs> the most beautiful women I have ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. And for him to say that she, you know, she as a Muslim would have to be vetted to see how conservative, conservative she is or not, I think it's absolutely insane and not an American value. So things like that is what. Absolutely. You know. 
<coughs> well, folks, we're going to take a quick break because I need a cough drop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting over cold. I'm sorry. I'm trying to hold this cough in. I'm trying not to cough on, on, on camera. But uh, give, we're going to take a couple of minutes, and we'll be back in, in uh, two minutes and, and keep this discussion going on why Donald Trump. Be right back. Yo les voy a dar a, a toda mi gente, por favor, que es un derecho el venir a votar y les recomiendo que vengan a votar para poder ser más, eh, tener un país con más facilidades. People need to vote because it's their right to vote. They need to build bridges, not walls. They need to respect each other's culture. They need to respect each other as human beings. Um, I am totally against what Hillary is doing. I don't trust Hillary, so you can get that on there. I don't, there's just something in my spirit that I just don't have a good sense with this woman. So, Hillary? Well, the candidate of the Democrats. And why? Because, well, for the experience. She has a lot of experience. She has been for many years in this en estos negocios y por eso voté por esta persona. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. Excuse me, sit down, you weren't called. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Go ahead. No, you don't. You haven't been called. Go back to Univision. Most of the people here that they're trying to send back is their homeland. They were here before we came. And we were brought here, kidnapped, brought here. But they were already here, so why are you gonna build a wall for them? Build bridges. Show love, show concern, show respect. That's what you need to do. And we put you in office, now only millionaires can run. When I was coming up, it was for the people. Now it's for anybody that got a doubt. So it shouldn't be that way. And that's what I think about America is looking at it and saying that he's targeting our, our our race he's not that is not the case at all what trump is trying to do is actually sit here and weed out the immigrants not just from mexico whether they're from any other country and i believe that um, we need to really consider these things because of the fact that we're taking on more expenses that we need to in our country here outside of just you know our own personal taxes you know um I know that, secondly, I don't want Obamacare. I am one person here along many others who don't have insurance. You know, I've worked all my life. I've worked really, really hard. I've been insured all my life. And this is the first time ever that I can't be insured. You know, I'm a middle class um, American, and um, that's, a, that's another reason here. Yeah, well, so I want to thank you for actually coming out and saying everything that you did. Appreciate it. Absolutely. And then also, no abortion. Sit down, please. You weren't called. Go. Yes, go ahead. I, uh, that's Jorge Ramos Hi, of Univision. Yes. He's being escorted out of the room. It's not about you. It's not about Get out of my country. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back to Latino Talk TV uh, with my with my host, with my guest host, uh, uh, Elaine Gracia, and Miss Vicky Cruz, who's who is a a uh, uh, conservative Republican that's uh, that's voting Trump, and uh, we want her to sit. We want to bring her in to tell us why she is backing Trump, being a mm -hmm. Latina from the East End, educated, educated, absolutely educated, very, from what I understand, very compassionate. Yes. You know, and, and that, that that really surprises me because usually you don't see that compassion. And and I think there's a difference between a conservative Republican and a crazy Trump voter. 
Yes. Because I mean, and I think the big difference to me is the compassion. I was I was on the phone with one of them the other day. Oh yeah. I've been on Facebook with all, but they're, they're nuts. They are nuts. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? And I know a lot of it is your is the reason you're voting for Trump. Uh, and and you voted. Well, you voted early, right? Mm -hmm, so that day. Mm -hmm. And uh, is because of your your conservative values. What about? What about some of the other? Well, let, let's talk about some of the things he said uh, about uh, about uh, uh, well, actually Mexican Americans in general, uh, uh, specifically Mexican Americans about being rapists, uh, criminals, uh, criminals, not being the know, best. Ag exactly. Mexico sent over. How, how did that make you feel? I mean, why why would you why would a person of of Mexican American descent? I mean, that that was the number one turnoff for me. Mm -hmm. he, and and the reason I'm saying it because, I mean, once you're racist, that, to me, that controls your whole character. Everything is controlled because you're racist. That's yes. basically the strongest trait you have. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, but you, you saw past that. So. I saw past that because I don't believe, I mean, and it's not that it's anything towards those that are, and I think that, number one, he's out of line as far as the numbers that are concerned about, um, about those that actually do come in here that are Mexicans, um, because it's probably like one percent. It's like so low um, that are actually going out there and raping. Um, I look mm -hmm. past it because of the fact that, um, you know, I know it's not the truth, and I know that, you know, I still have to stick to the morals of of what I feel. Um, you know, we have people that are disrespecting each other, you know, races, you know, whether it's, I mean, that's what media does all day, right? I mean, they're sitting here and building wars against what the whites are doing to the blacks and, you know, what the, what they're, how are the, you know, they're treating, um, you know, uh, whether you're, you know, Christian or not Christian or Muslims against, you know, so they, you know, just the, just the war card against, you know, against um, each other. You know, so I really do feel that um, I know that it was something that shouldn't have been said. Mm -hmm. um, I know that in particular, I don't believe he's calling out just our whole race, you know, but again, media can do a great job with blowing things more out of proportion. So there's some things that I have to kind of just fine tune to say, you know what, are you really going to take something that personal, you know, and and just look, yes, I can look beyond it. I can look beyond it, you know. Now, let me ask you about some of the other things he said about the immigrant community. Uh, now, he wants to start an immigration force mm -hmm. that would go by and start rounding up all, uh, all the illegal immigrants. And, and actually, he, he's talking about sending families back, which I don't know how he expects to do that because there's something in this country called due process. Right. Where you can't just grab somebody and just put them on a bus and send them back. Right. And he's talking about sending their children back with them that are American citizens. Mm -hmm. And I just can't even get my head around how you would do that. How you're going to send one of your citizens back to a country he's never been to or to a country he's never been to. D does that concern you when he says he wants to start an immigration force and, and, and raid? I mean, the East End would be prime, would be uh, my husband, prime ground. I mean, my husband's a naturalized citizen, and if he doesn't happen to have his... Documents on him. Is he going to be one that's going to get deported before due process? Yeah, I worry about it Yeah, a lot. Um, my my mother and father-in-law are both extremely educated two degrees apiece uh, But they they speak Spanish and have accents their Spanish is their first language. I worry about them um, Yeah, I think that that is that was really a driving force for me um, and I don't under I, I I have a heart I have an issue with <clears throat> giving it a pass you know it, it's 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 said and he means it and you can't just say well he said it but he didn't mean it I mean he said it and he means it and so um, I, I have to believe that and that's something he back would do oh that's what just what they wanted to hear yeah build the wall round them up send them back yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know what? And, and we've been down this road before. Yes, we have. You know, in in uh, uh, in the Depression, we sent back two million. Some that, that were citizens. Right. We sent and just put them on the bus and sent them back. We did. And by, by the time the war started, they were begging them to come back. Mm-hmm. 
doing anything they could to get that workforce here. Right, we And a lot of it. people don't realize, you're talking about 11 million people. 11 million people. How are you gonna get 11 million people and, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna quote, I'm gonna quote a, a very intelligent, very smart white guy from Rice University called Stephen Kleinberg. Yes, I know him. Dr. Stephen Kleinberg, yes. who many times just says, for one, he says that 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 uh, 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 inroads have been made to the Latino community. He said you could stop, close the borders today, not let another one in. He said in 30 years, this is gonna be this is gonna be a, a majority Latino country. Yes. I mean, and there's no stopping that. No. And like you know, and he's going, and even if you did, he said you do that, and you will decimate the economy. And this is a man who has studied Houston for over 30 years, 30 up to close to 40 years. This right. man has studied Houston and studied the economy, and nobody knows better than Stephen Kleinberg. And like like our, our friend Dr. Larry Payne loves to say, this isn't this isn't the Mexican from East End talk. This is a white guy from Rice University saying this. That's right. You know, and some people don't want to hear that. Yeah. They don't want to well, hear that. I mean, I think they believe that uh, because we have such a huge workforce. It keeps other people from flourishing in their businesses as well. Yeah. And um, they feel like if they're all gone and then they can, you know, the prices. They will just kind of step in and uh, yeah, take over. No, yeah. That's not how it works. It's not how it works. Yeah. I think, yeah, our hotel economy, our restaurants, our, uh, I mean, you name it out there. Construction, forget it. Construction would be down the toilet. You know, I have I have a friend of mine who who is in the produce business. Mm. His father built a business in produce at the farmer's market, and he is a pro-Trump. And I just can't believe it. He says, man, he goes, you, your family made their fortune on the backs of illegal immigrant workers, of undocumented immigrant workers, and now you don't want them? I mean, what happens if you get rid of them? Does, does, this, does this produce rot on the vine in the fields because you can't get anybody to pick them? What happens? What I, happens to that? I, they really don't believe that they hire undocumented oh, workers. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know quite a few people that don't believe that they hire undocumented workers. It's like, well, just because you went through the staffing company doesn't mean you don't have <laughs> undocumented workers in your workforce. But, but yeah, that's that's a that's a big concern, I think, and probably the biggest concern for Hispanics is um, what happens to all of these families and the economy. I mean, yeah. do you notice? I mean some stupid emails come out and all of a sudden, you know, the stock market starts taking a dive because people are afraid of what a Trump president <coughs> would do to the economy. Mm -hmm. It's, it is fear. I mean, he incites fear on both sides. Mm -hmm. It's weird. How, how, did, how, how do you, how do you deal with that in, in your, in your uh, support of Donald Trump? Okay. So, you know, when I look at that, I know that he said he was actually going to weed out, you know, and, um, and it's not just the Latino community that he would mm -hmm. weed out immigrants, you know, and, you know, but yes, he would weed out those, you know, that are criminals and, and, you know, find the, the process to just, you know, to pull them out and to send them back. Now, I haven't heard that, that he's going to weed out. He's talking about just in general. Just no, this was, no, this was recently when Pence was announced. Pence actually said, see, but I, it's kind of hard because on the debate, he, he kind of doesn't go with Pence, so it's kind of hard yeah. to tell. But Pence did say that he had changed his his, his, stance. his stance on how he would deal with the immigration mm -hmm. reform. Pence had or that Trump had? Well, Pence said that Trump had. Trump had, okay. So, but I, but I, I, I have not seen. You know what? And I got to say, I like Pence. Yes. He's a smart man. And that's probably one of the main reasons as well that because he is Christian and, um, you know, he Pence is, he seems like a very decent. He's a, yes. he's the real deal. He's yeah. the real deal. When Absolutely. it comes to a conservative uh, candidate, he's the real deal. You know, I know our, our good friend, J.R. Gonzalez, always say, you know, talks about the immigration problem. He goes, why, why does our compassion end at the border? You know, and that's that's a point that he, he brings up that, that you know, that has a lot of truth to it. Really it does have a lot, lot of truth. truth. Yeah, but then we have to also ask ourselves, what is also, what is Hillary's stance on it? What is she going to do? Because she, too, is looking at, you know, putting a border and securing the borders with more money, you know, you know, with with the higher cost of what Trump is looking at doing. You know, but then that that you, you come back to to the fact that's being reported that that illegal immigration right now is flat. I mean, we have just as many people going back as coming. Mm -hmm. So it's it's absolutely flat. So you're going to spend anywhere from forty billion to sixty-three billion dollars building right. a wall. Where are you going to get that kind of money? 
That's, that, that's, a, that, that's know, out of the middle class out of all of us. Absolutely. But, but there's, you know, I, I saw one picture of, of, uh, of a 40 foot wall and, and uh, a Latino guy sat on top of it with a 41 foot rope. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, said, uh, I saw really? that other said, one. Oh Wasn't God. there a commercial overseas as well where people were just like digging underneath the wall? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, hey, I, I didn't realize Latinos were such great, such great, uh, you know, are you kidding? tunnel they're, rats. You know? they're, they're builders. <laughs> what do you expect? Oh, yeah, they'll build anything. Yeah, they're, absolutely. They're builders. We'll build a bridge over it. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. No, but seriously, I mean, you know, Hillary, too, has also said yeah. the same thing, but the only thing is her approach is way different. Yeah. You know, they're not hearing. You know, people need to really, really listen to what Hillary is saying. You know what I mean? Because she has the same stance for the immigration and the wall. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just her approach is just different. It's not coming out vocally, you know, abrupt, abruptly the way you know, Donald's doing. You know, and you might have, I think you have a point there, but I mean, if you come out saying that, oh, they're all rapists, you know, they're sending but, their, okay, the worst. Okay, we'll get, the, we'll get the rapists too. Okay, we're just going back to rapists. Let's talk about, you know, Hillary and her defending a rapist. You know, I mean, we're looking, of course, and of course, I know I'm just changing the subject here, but when you just talked about the rapist piece, it's just, there's so many reasons to sit here, and I'm not, again, um, it's one of the many reasons why I vote for Donald, you know, mm -hmm. Donald Trump. And you're you're talking about when she defended the the man that raped, raped the, the twelve, four, the 14, twelve. <coughs> I think she was twelve, um, but she was a she was working as an attorney at the time. Was assigned the case. Right. And she was a public defender. Yes, at the time, right. she yeah. was not allowed to not, mm -hmm. um, you know, represent him. She had her president the best way she could. That's yes, right. she did job her job. Uh, and actually, the problem with that whole case is the prosecutor messed it up. Correct, correct. So it's kind of unfair. I mean, people should be going back and saying, you know, where, why can't we get better prosecutors instead of, you know, coming down on a very good defender? You know uh, what? And, and, and Vicki, I tell you what, what I, res I respect your position because you, you've done it very articulately, mm -hmm. very intelligently. And I see that your vote is based in your conservative moral values. That's right. And I can respect that. I can respect that more, 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 more than, you know, most, you know, I, I think there will be people that believe me. But, um, you know, at, at the same time, son of a gun scares the hell out of me. I almost said something else. <laughs> I forgot. We're on the public TV. I can't say yeah, that Yeah, you word. can't say those but words. But it scares the hell out of me if this guy wins. wins. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I'm, and, and even if maybe if he loses, you know, if, if he loses, I mean, we might have the same thing. I mean, are we going to have racial wars in the street? You know, I mean, he has brought out such such hate in the community and yes. and, 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 and reawakened, reawakened that that. Yes. That. The shame is gone. Exactly. The shame is gone. There you there's no shame anymore of being racist. Yeah. That's that's what's wrong. There was even if you had some deep seated racism or bias, you kept it to yourself. Yeah. You might have said it at the at the dinner table every now and then, but you did not come out and say the things that these people have said. Yeah. Correct. And I think that too, I mean when we're looking at you know, I mean people are just looking at it from the short term of saying if Donald Trump came in there's going to be, you know, greater division among the different race, you know, Hispanics, mm -hmm. Latinos. Um, that's already going on. You know, again, when we're looking at what, you know, and there's division among the uh, armed forces, not armed forces, the um, police force, right? You mm -hmm. know, with, you know, putting that... Um, the, the 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 police force and and people with the blacks, you know, the whites shooting the blacks and and the just what have you. And then you're looking at um, in the future, people are just looking to say, hey, well, you know what? He's creating this division, this wall against these Mexicans, or um, the hatred. But look what's going to happen later on, with all the li you know with all the liberalism coming around from the 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 decisions and and the future um, policies that are going to happen with. Hillary, you know, allowing or, or, or trying to push for the same sex bathrooms, you know, or having to sit there. I mean, how is that going to be divided? We're going to eventually, no matter what it is, you know, we vote for Hillary, 
we're looking at sitting here and looking at, you know, restrooms, um, transgender courses for five-year-olds. We're looking at sitting here and having, um, you know, the abortions, you know, third term abortions being legal, um, taking away our second amendment. So all these things, no matter what it is, is going to eventually create the division that people are only looking at short term on what Donald Trump is doing now. I'm like, hey, listen, look at what Hillary can do with the decisions and the policies now, now, that now, she's now. trying you, you, to enforce. You brought something up. I and know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call you on this. <laughs> yep. How do you repeal the Second Amendment? Do you, do you know the process? Yeah. No. Okay. And, See, that's, and, that's and an basically, issue. is the yeah. president has no say in, 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 in how amendment is repealed. That has to go, it has to be introduced into Congress. Yes. And then it has to be passed by two thirds of the Congress. Yes. By two thirds. Mm -hmm. Then it has to go to each state, and 37 states have to ratify it within a certain time period. Right. It is a very. It won't happen. It's not going to happen. No. It's not going to happen. You know? And, and that's why when, 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 and I think that's another scare attack. It oh, is. we're going to take away our guns. Yeah. It's and a I'm, I'm a gun, I'm, I'm, I'm a gun owner, believe me. I was. I remember a lot of people remember from, from Houston, the uh, Oshman's uh, stores. I was their top gun salesman in, in, in the chain. <laughs> I mean, I sold a lot of guns. I bought a lot of guns, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I, I believe in that right. But, you know, when I, I think that might be another scare tactic people use. Oh, he's got to take away the second one. It is. The yeah, NRA went hard crazy. on that one. Yeah, that is, that, that that's is not possible. That would have to be introduced into Congress, and, uh, man, it ain't going to happen. And, and I think the beauty of our country is, um, you know, which I think I wish Americans understood better, and especially Latinos, is um, the... Um, we, we have such a huge check and balance system in exactly. our government. I mean, that's exactly why Obama didn't do half of what he wanted to do right. is because we had such a good check and balance system and sometimes too good. I mean, we, we, we had the country almost. It, it, it amazes me that he got Obamacare through. I know, exactly. Clinton tried to do the same thing, couldn't do it. Right. He had, he had a Democratic Congress. Exactly. So, I mean, part of this, everybody blames it on him, but it's, it was all of it. it. All of them agreed to this, or not all of them, but a, a majority did. And so with that type of check and balance, uh, <coughs> that's what keeps our country above everyone else, is that we have that ability of not allowing someone to run amok. Um, and when they do run amok, well, then they get impeached. <laughs> yeah. So let, let me ask you, let me ask you, Vic, there's, there's two questions. We're getting near to the end of the program. I want, I want to run two questions by you. Uh, I guess the, the, the first question is, who did you originally support in, 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 the, in, the, in the primary? Primary. Well, Ted Cruz. Mas triste, <laughs> of a conservative <laughs> Texan Republican. Yes. Oh well, well, I guess so. But okay, okay. Who did who that. did you vote in the primary? Who did you vote for in the primary? In the primary, well, my only really the only choice was was Hillary. I thought the uh, vote for uh, my three for, 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 for Bernie. <laughs> I thought the vote for Bernie was would would have been a wasted vote. So you voted for Hillary. So I voted. I did vote for Hillary. See, I, I voted for, for Marco Rubio. Yeah. Yeah. And there there were some Latinos that I really I mean not Ted Cruz, please. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think, you know what, I think there's, if this state goes goes blue. But you, you know, if yes. If this state goes blue Our, and you get the right candidate, the right Latino candidate running against him, Mr. Cruz may not be there the next time around. I think, you know what I think is going to save him, though, is he stood up to Trump. He was the one candidate that said, no, you were ugly to my wife and I'm not going to support you. And I think a lot of people still have a huge amount of respect for him for that. Matt, that's true, yeah. No, it's true. I, I've heard them. <laughs> They're like, could be oh, no. He said, sword, though. It could be you a double-edged sword, though. You didn't stand up for Trump, you know. Oh, that's true. It could be uh, a double-edged sword. Yeah. It could be. And, it's you know, and my second skip. question, Vicky, is, okay, I'm getting old, so I'm forgetting my, I remember my first, what's my second? Oh, my second question is, with, with, with Donald, do you think he has been good or bad for the Republican Party? Well, I tell you what, he definitely came in shaking things up. <laughs> I'm like, I cannot believe how um, his presence or his, you know, his position um, has divided mm -hmm. the Republican Party, you know. Um, so, yeah. I you know, and, and one of the things I said, and I think you said it too, Elaine, is that, is that uh, uh, um, Donald Trump would, 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 his whole campaign was destroying the conservative movement. It did. 
-hmm. and, and they only have themselves to blame for it. Absolutely. Yes. They only have themselves to blame for right. it. And not so much the conservative moral, but the, the, the ultra conservative, you know, uh, uh, far right. Yes. And uh, tea partiers that have, oh, that yes. have brought this on, 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 on they, their They did. On, on their, their party. That, too many people got upset with the Republican Party not making moves. They could, they just put everything in gridlock. Mm -hmm. So We only got a, a, a couple, about a minute left. Tell, tell the folks there why they should vote for Donald Trump. Well, we're going to start off with why not to vote. I mean, the thing about it is, is we've got a good vice president, Pence. That's number. No, but you don't vote for vice president. I know, but what are we going to exactly? So what, I we, know we vote that. For, we vote for DT I and, totally and, and then pop a cap in them. Or I what? understand <laughs> that, but I just don't want don't them to look to say no. <laughs> it's just the fact that you know what you know with the president. You know, you've got your right hand man, and that would be Pence. Secondly, would be because I do believe that you know Donald Trump does have the business savviness of of you know coming out and um, bringing the country through. Um, the, the crisis that we're in with the economy, um, you know, again, you were going to always go back to the, to the abortion stance of, of the values, um, conservative values. And, um, I know we got to go, but I just, I really, my, my whole stance here today is to just encourage, you know, I know that we have traditions you in, go. in voting. Yeah. But you know what? I want to thank Vicki. Thank you so much. She was having, brave. They're having the guts to mm -hmm. be here. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Guys, we only got a week left. Yes, vote. Uh, eight vote. days. Please, eight days. Please Everybody vote. go out and vote. Yes. I don't know who you're voting for. Just go out and vote. And know why you're voting. And Okay. Educate that's good. yourself. Educate yourself. Why you're got voting. Got a lot of service. So we're going to see you in a week, uh, in eight days, on, on Monday night, night before the election. We'll see you then, folks. All right. Good night. Awesome. Thank you. Good night. See you.